Welcome to Electron Online. Just like Wien found the relationship between the temperature of an object and the type of the radiation coming from that object, Stefan and Boltzmann, they also researched the relationship between the temperature and the kind of radiation coming from an object, but more so in terms of the intensity, the amount of radiation, not so much the wavelength, but the amount of the radiation, the number of photons leaving an object. And their studies indicated that if two objects were at the same temperature, but one was bigger than the other, let's say that they're both spheres, and one is, has a surface area of 20 square meter, and the other one has a surface area of 10 square meter, if the area is twice as big, they found out that the amount of radiation coming from the bigger object, if they were at the same temperature, was proportional to the size, and therefore the radiation would be twice as strong coming from this object as coming from that object. So we could say two times the intensity and versus one time the intensity. I stands for the intensity or the amount of radiation coming from the object. Also, they looked at two objects. Let's say they were at the same size, but one was double the temperature of the other. There they found out something really surprising. If the temperature was twice as much and the objects were the same size, this object would give off 16 times as much radiation. So instead of twice, it would be 16 times the intensity versus one time the intensity for an object at 1,000 Kelvin. So when the temperature doubled, you'd have 16 times the intensity. So putting that together, they then realized that the total intensity the amount of radiation in intensity coming from an object was proportional to the surface area, which I'll indicate with an A, and the temperature to the fourth power. That's why 2 to the fourth power is 16. That's where the 16 came from. Which would also indicate, let's say, that the temperature was maybe 3,000 Kelvin. At 3,000 Kelvin, it would no longer be 16 times the intensity, but it would be 3 to the fourth power, or 81 times the intensity. And let's say that an object was maybe 10,000 Kelvin versus 1,000 Kelvin. 10 times the temperature would indicate 10 to the fourth power or 10,000 times the intensity. So all of a sudden we began to realize that when it comes to stars, if stars are really hot, they give off an enormous amount of energy. We also found, and you'll see that in later videos, that, larger, that hotter stars also tend to be larger stars. So not only do they give off more radiation, higher intensity radiation because they're hotter, they also give it off more radiation because they are bigger. They can easily be 10, 15, 20, 100, 1,000 times as big in surface area, giving much more radiation because of its size and much more radiation because of the temperature. So let's do a little example of that. Let's say that we have one star, which is at 3,000 Kelvin. And let's say we have another star, which is at 10,000 Kelvin, and that star has a surface area, which let's say if the surface area of this one is A, maybe this one has a surface area of 100 A. Wow, how much more radiation would you get from this bigger, hotter star compared to this star? Well, first of all, if it's 100 times the size, 100 times the surface area, you would expect 100 times as much energy. So for the area, it's 100 times as much, I'll just write it as 100x or 100 times. And, well, let me get rid of the x because that's so you don't confuse it with the variable x. So I'll just go 100. And then we multiply that times the increase due to the temperature. And notice 10,000 versus 3,000, that's more than three times as much. More like 3.3 or something like that. And if we square 3.3, uh, not square it, but if we quadruple it, let's see here. Let's do that. Let's do it on the calculator. So we have 10,000 divided by 3,000. And then we square it and we square it again. That's 123 times as much energy. So it's 100 times 123. We multiply that, we get 12,300 times as much energy. So there's, that's really interesting. A single star, now three stars that are 3,000 Kelvin, they're kind of small and red. They're not very big. They don't give out that much light. But here we have another star like Sirius, which would be a white star at 10,000 Kelvin, much bigger. So you'd get 100 times the increase in size. That means 100 times as much energy. And we get a temperature that's more than three times as hot. And from that, we have another tremendous increase in the amount of radiation. So a star like Sirius would put out more than 10,000 times as much light as a star that's at 3,000 Kelvin, like what we call a small red dwarf. Pretty amazing. So Stefan's Boltzmann's law gave us that information. 
They then put that into an equation, and they said that the intensity is equal to the emissivity, E, times the constant, times the area, times t to the fourth power. In case you're interested in the equation, emissivity here is a number between 0 and 1. So E is a number usually closer to 1 than it is to 0. So for E's, you can just plug a 1 in there. For most stars, it's very nearly 1. Sigma is a constant. Sigma, which is equal to uh, 5 point... Uh, no, no, not 5.67. I have to go look Why it up. Why is that out? Oh, it is that. Um, oh, wow. 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. And of course, the units would be uh, watts per square meter per temperature to the fourth power. And so temperature, of course, that would be Kelvin. Let me put a K there. So that would be the units of the constant. So E is usually about 1. Sigma is about 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per square meter per Kelvin to the fourth power. Then you put in the surface area. Then you put in the temperature. And from that, you will get the intensity. We could do that for the sun. Okay, well, let's see here if we can figure it out. The intensity of the sun, and I'm running out of board space, so let me make a little bit of room on the board, maybe over here somewhere. So how much energy does the sun put out? Well, I is equal to, emissivity would be 1. The constant would be 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. And uh, we know the answer is going to be in watts. The intensity issue is going to be in watts. The surface area of the sun, hmm, the radius of the sun, so the surface area would be 4 pi, 4 pi times the radius. And the radius, I believe, is 697 million meters. We have to square that. So that would be the radius of the sun, 4 pi r squared. And then we have to multiply that times the temperature, which is about... 5,800 Kelvin, and of course the constant here would be watts per square meter per Kelvin to the fourth power. Don't, don't forget to raise it to the fourth power. And then with a calculator, hopefully I got the radius of the sun correct. It's about that, I believe. It's about uh, 700, 1.4. Yeah, that's about right. That's about the right number for the sun. 696, 697, somewhere in that neighborhood. We'll be close. 5.67 e to the 8 minus times 4 times pi times 697,000,000 squared and then times 5800 to the fourth power equals, and there we go, 3.92 times 10 to the 26th, right? Yes, so the intensity, the amount of energy coming from the sun using Stefan Boltzmann's law is 3.92 times 10 to the 26th watts. That's an enormous amount of energy that the sun puts out every single second. That many joules every second from the sun, second after second, and it's been doing that for 4.6 billion years. And will continue to do that for many more billion years into the future. Of course, we know that as time goes on, billion years from now, the sun will get warmer and the sun will begin to put more and more energy out into space. So it'll actually get warmer on the earth in about a billion years or so. Anyway, coming back to the basics here, Stefan Boltzmann's law, emissivity of the material, that's a number like equal to 1. The sigma is the constant of um, proportionality. The surface area of the sun, for a sphere, that would be 4 pi times the radius squared. And temperature, 5800 degrees for the sun, to the fourth power, and it tells us how much radiation comes from the star. So Stefan Boltzmann gives us a really great inf some really good information to understand stars better. Based on the size of the star, based on the temperature of the star, we should be able to figure out how much energy the star puts out. And what we'll find is there are stars out there that may put as much as a million times the energy of the sun out simply because they're so much bigger and so much hotter than the sun. We all owe that to Stefan Boltzmann for discovering this relationship.